Thanks very much and uh, time for an NDTV exclusive on the ongoing controversy over exactly what the arrangement was with Yaqub Memon and the CBI that led to his abrupt return to India in 1994. B. Raman, as we know, the former RAW official, who is of course uh, now no more, has written an article where he claimed that Yaqub Memon actually surrendered to India in Nepal and was actually brought back to India and shown as arrested here. And he says that Yaku Memon cooperated extensively with the CBI for which he should be shown leniency. What exactly happened between the CBI and the Yakub Memon return and arrest, as we said, continues to haunt the case even as the clock ticks towards his execution. We spoke today to Shantanu Sen, who was the head of the special task force, the STF, which had been constituted to investigate this case in 1993. He was closely involved in the entire investigations and he came up with a much more nuanced version of exactly what was the deal that was done uh, between Yaku Memon and the CBI. I began by asking Mr. Sen exactly that, who I spoke to uh, in Calcutta a short while ago, about whether there was any sort of secret deal, was there any sort of secret arrangement between the CBI and Yaku Memon that led to his return. Now, we learnt very confidentially from our sources that as far as the Memon family was concerned, there was an internal disagreement between them and this man, Yaqub Memon, and large number of his members of his family were very unhappy in Pakistan. They felt unsafe. They felt, a, which is in Hindi, a word called ghutan. And they also felt that maybe they will not be able to survive this atmosphere and, and maybe Pakistanis will not trust them. Having come to know that, we used our uh, contacts to induce them to believe that their, their safety lay in India. At least for the members of the family who they thought were not directly involved in the crime would be safer in India. Okay, so we this offered a, them the great justice of India. So this is a very, very interesting point you made. You said that you actually used your contacts in Pakistan to induce them into believing that their safety lay in India and you offered them the great justice of India. But that still doesn't answer the question, sir, as to where exactly was Yaqub Memon arrested? Was he picked up in Nepal? Was he picked up in Delhi? Tell us about the circumstances surrounding his arrest. Now, Ty... Yaqub made his probably his own inquiries and he certainly decided to come back to India along with almost 11, they were all together, I think 11 including children, who decided to return to India. We were watching their movements from day one. We had our contacts, we knew how they were coming and as and when they landed, wherever they landed, we were able to arrest them. And we kept our word, we investigated them. It was a fair and a square investigation. And all the charges against them were thoroughly verified, corroborated. We, all, we knew all the contacts because, you know, the case had been by then exposed wide open. But did you, in exchange for their return, did you offer them some sort of deal? Did you say that the charges against them would not be pressed to the full extent? The criminal justice system does not give any right to the investigating officers to have any agreement, legal agreement with any accused unless he's in his custody. And then everything is done with the consent of the trial court. You know our justice system is very clear about this. The trial court and a trial court alone can agree to give some concession, probation, lesser sentence. And as you, as you know very well, this matter of sentence is between the prosecutor and the court. As far as my team is concerned, our duty is to collect the entire evidence and put it up before the court. Right, but uh, tell me, sir, it, doesn't this amount to misleading the Memon family, to duping them into believing that they would come here and that they would get justice and then all of them are arrested and thrown into court? 
As you know, Yaqub was leading that faction of the family which was unhappy in Pakistan. And they were a large number. Only two brothers were willing to settle down. The rest were unhappy. So Yaqub felt that the rest of the family will get justice. And they did. Out of 11, only four have been convicted. The rest of them have not been convicted. His parents got bailed and then they died. They, if they had been prosecuted, possibly they would have been charges against them would have been dropped. Similarly, others, the charges were dropped. So an assurance was given that the fair system of law that exists in India will, will be available to them. Right. So you're saying that therefore then there was no going back on the CBI's word that you'd given uh, to Yaqub Memon that led to his coming to India. So, Yaqub and the rest of his members, I, I met them when they came. They were delighted to be back in India and they, involved, they were involved in our interrogation. And the justice system was open to them to avail of. You know that Yaqub never mentioned, never mentioned during his trial that he had any agreement. Had he, the defense would have taken advantage of that. This is, a, this, this is something which I am hearing for the first time. All right. Well, that is, of course, certainly a question, uh, Mr. Sen, that remains unanswered. Thank you so much for talking to us. But Mr. Sen, Shantanu Sen, CBI official who investigated this case, making a very, very interesting nuanced intervention in the debate, saying that there was no deal as such with Yaqub Memon, but the fact that the Indian government through its agencies was in touch with him and members of his family and that they induced him to come back to India with a promise that India would be safer for them. They promised them a fair trial and that is what he claims they got. Of course, uh, the family and Yaqub Memon's lawyers might completely disagree, but a new dimension emerging uh, to this unfolding story.